Oh my gosh! Hi! Okay, look, I didn't see you that. I'm just busy using my camera to text. Let me show you about my room. So, this is gorgeous. <laughs> this is my bed. I'm on an out. Uh, I'm outside of college. Um, but it's right by college, so it's really nice. <sighs> this is where the chair normally is. Cute little desk moment with all of this really adorable um, bottle opener. But to black. And that's about it. We've got it unpacked. Going for a bit of a minimalist thing. I don't know if you can have stuff on the walls. Because sometimes they're a bit funny about that, but <laughs> yeah, that's it. This is my room, and I've got all the clothes ready. All the suits ready for the formal, and that's about it. Thank you. Ta da! <laughs> Welcome to my incredible friend Emily's room. Isn't it spacious and gorgeous and beautiful? Let's first go into the kitchen. This is a completely private kitchen just for her. Everything you see today is part of Emily's individual accommodation. We'll get onto more details about this later on. So we have the little side desk in the corner. And when we turn around, we can see the living room. You've got shelves, you've got chairs, you've got a gorgeous view from the window. Perfect for entertaining any guests. Now let's check out the bedroom. So you've got the bed, obviously, a bedside table and another desk. Finally, we've got the ensuite with the shower, sink and toilet. After showing you these two room tours, I wanted to talk to you a bit more in depth about what accommodation is like at John's so you can understand beyond just seeing two examples. At John's, we have on-site and off-site accommodation. On-site means it's physically at St. John's College and that's where you'll be living. Off-site means that it will be in a building owned by the St. John's College, but it's not within the four walls of the college. So it might be a few streets away, but it's never really gonna be too far away from college. Most freshers live in the Crips accommodation. This is on-site accommodation at the back of college, which is pretty much halls. This means that you will share a kitchen with seven other people and you'll have your own room. You might have an ensuite, you might not. If you don't have an ensuite, you'll be sharing the bathroom with the rest of your housemates and also sharing the shower with the rest of your housemates. The pros of this accommodation is that it's very social, especially in freshers. You walk into the kitchen and you'll probably see a housemate there. It's a good place to get to know people. So I think that's definitely a good accommodation for freshers. Also, since it's a new accommodation, it's well equipped. In the kitchen, there's four hobs either side. So technically all of the people in your kitchen could be cooking at the same time. Don't recommend it and it won't happen, but yeah, it's got good equipment. Also, the location is ideal. It's right by the washing facilities. It's right by the gym and you'll be close to all the other freshers. So that's another massive positive of the Crips accommodation. The only con, in my opinion, is that there are a lot of stairs. I was on the top floor and I had to do six flights of stairs, only small flights, but still running up and down to my room every day. It could be a bit annoying. Beyond that, it is not as aesthetic as the rest of John's accommodation because it's a modern building. So the rest of John's is this beautiful castle and it's giving you the Cambridge aesthetic, dark academia energy. And then you get to Crips and it's just a modern building that doesn't really fit the vibe of the rest of college. But to be honest, I don't think it really matters because you're not gonna be in your room all the time. You'll be going into your room to sleep. And also from Crips, there's a gorgeous view of the rest of college. So. I think it's a pretty good accommodation. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the accommodation mainly for second years and beyond. The way that you get assigned accommodation at John's works as follows. There is a ballot and it's randomised, so every single student must be put on a random place on this list and then you choose. So then they start from number one, who has first choice of the room, then number two, then number three, da 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 da. And then the year after that, they switch the order. So it's fair, if you get a not so good room in your second year, you'll get a better room in your third year, for example. There are obviously exceptions to this list. If you have a disability or allergy or a certain condition, that means you have to have a certain type of accommodation. John's will bear this in mind and they have accessible accommodation, 
accommodation for everybody. But after the pre-allocation has been done for people who need a certain type of accommodation, then they go with the list. That's why Emily has a different type of accommodation to me because she was high on the list. So she got first pick of the rooms. However, I was 92nd on the list and I was still really happy with my room. It was still big. It just isn't on site and it's fine. It's really, really close to college. So you'll see that even if you're at the very, very bottom of the ballot, which I wasn't, but I was pretty near the bottom, you will still get a good room. So the first type of accommodation that is normally for second or third years is the single set. This is when one person has a mini apartment to themselves. Essentially, they've got their bedroom, an ensuite, a sort of living room, and then a kitchen. Sometimes they don't have the living room, it depends how nice your room is. This accommodation is very popular, so it's pretty difficult to get your hands on, and also it can be slightly more expensive. I have never experienced living in this accommodation because I always like living with somebody else, and also I wasn't high enough on the ballot to choose a single set accommodation. However, my friends who have this accommodation all really like it. A more common version of this perhaps is the double set. It's the same layout as the previous accommodation I explained. However, there's two people within the mini apartment rather than just one. Let's just say that this accommodation is a bit reminiscent of a Cardi B album, Invasion of Privacy. <laughs> I'm joking, but you do have to be close to your friend because you'll be seeing them a lot. It's just the two of you in this mini apartment. Essentially, you have four rooms which are all attached. So the first person's bedroom is attached to the second person's bedroom. The second person's bedroom is attached to the ensuite and the first person's bedroom is attached to the little kitchen. One inconvenience is that in order to go to the bathroom, you have to walk through your friend's room and in order for your friend to get to the kitchen, they have to walk through your room, which obviously is not ideal. However, it is on site and it is the classic Cambridge vibe, fancy old castle building. So I really enjoyed it. So the pros are that you can live with a friend. I had this, like I said, for a short time in second year before I went to Italy with Christina. Essentially, the double set accommodation is a mini apartment for two people. Jokes aside, it is a good accommodation option, especially if you want to just have like, <laughs> I thought of it as just like a sleep of a party every night with my friend. Finally, we have off-site accommodation. This is the accommodation I mentioned just a second ago. Basically, there are houses owned by the college which aren't physically within the four walls of the college. The pros of this accommodation are that you have more freedom. This basically means that you can throw parties if you want, you can have more people over because you're not on site of the college, so it's a bit more chill. No, there, there technically are rules about if, when you can have parties and the time that music needs to be down by and stuff like that, but either way, it's a bit more chill than on-site accommodation. Also, my room off-site is a lot bigger than my previous rooms on-site, and I think it costs the same amount, so that was a big pro of being an off-site accommodation. Alongside that, they also have better resources sometimes, so I don't have to go the whole way to the laundry room, which is very often crowded because in my house we have a washing machine and a drying machine which is shared between eight people instead of the eight washers and dryers that are shared between the whole rest of the college on site. An obvious con is that a lot of your friends will be living within St John's College and you will be a couple of streets away so to go and meet up with them you can't just put your crocs on and then nip down the stairs and see them you actually have to go out of your house and walk five minutes at the max but this has never posed a problem for me i mean i'm very close to the college so it's not that big of a deal also obviously you're not in the fancy castle it's not got the same sleigh dark academia cambridge vibe as the on-site accommodation but i really don't think that this matters because no matter where you live you will still be spending a lot of time within the college your accommodation is just where you sleep if you want it to be you can spend all the rest of the time in college this was not a comprehensive list of every single type of john's accommodation but it sums up the majority. Also, a lot of this is just my own opinion. Some people might think, oh, I absolutely hated this accommodation, but I love this one. Or, I don't know, people have their different opinions. So, take what I said with a pinch of salt. And remember that all the accommodation at John's is nice. They're not going to give you a horrible, disgusting room so far away from everywhere else. It's going to be okay. For people interested in other colleges, I don't know the exact details because I've always been at John's. 
However, I think that the accommodation that I've shown is pretty standard Cambridge accommodation. At Cambridge, the collegiate system really helps get accommodation sorted because you don't have to go directly to the landlord. The college always gives you a helping hand. That's all for today. Next Friday, I will be publishing the very first vlog of term time at Cambridge. This is week one, so the Freshers' Week vlog. Do Cambridge students go out clubbing? Do Cambridge students spend all day studying? What's my life like? What are supervisions like? Find out all this and more in next week's video.